really encouraged, like Dad was saying, encourage us to be, to come together, because together that's where he said, where two or three are gathered there in my name, I am there. So really encourage us to come together, communion, because where we are is where the fullness of God is. So yeah. we want to just keep coming together and uh, like what he said, I just want to rephrase what he said. Just keep coming, just keep coming. You might have an addiction or whatever you have, but just keep coming, you'll get healed sooner or later. Come on, man. All right, let's get started. Um, today, let me see. I had a lot of things to share, but I'm probably going to stick to one topic. I'm going to talk about grace today. Come on. So a lot of people, when, when they hear grace, they're not... You, you bring... They... They're very skeptical about grace. When you say grace, their fences rise up, and then they're like, oh, this person is probably teaching about license to sin. But that's actually not what the Bible says. The Bible says that if you're under grace, sin will not have dominion over you. So we're really, we're really hootwinked by the devil when we think that if you're under grace, sin has dominion over you, when that's the opposite of what the Bible says. And I want to just talk about that so we can really have a grasp and understanding of what grace is. Because Paul says that we have to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and in His grace. We have to grow in the word of His grace. And a lot of us, we, we really don't, we don't see it, but when you really go deep into our hearts, we can really see that we don't really believe grace. We think it's too good, oh, it's too good to be true, that's fake news, you know. But all Paul said, we live by the grace of God, we live by, we just, you have to really be fully engraved by it. Let it come into you. Let it so into you. Because those who are really into His grace, you can see they manifest the fruit of the Spirit. And it's not like they're trying to be good. It just effortlessly comes out of them. Because it's full in them. So you have to really, once you get impacted by the grace of God, it's not going to leave the same way that you were before. And I could, I'm going to talk about myself a little bit. Um, the people who could really say amen to this is the people in my family because they've seen the drastic <laughs> change in my um, personality. I mean, just uh, studying and preaching. So, <laughs> I, 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 didn't think I'll be standing here. I didn't even think I'll be standing here. Like a couple of years ago, I was like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, I was, um, all right, I'm going to say a couple of things that people don't, you won't think I would, I would have done. Um, I used to, I remember I used to like this game called, I still sort of like it, but I was really addicted to it. It's called Wizard 101. And, uh, <laughs> she knows. Yeah, I was like, really, I was really addicted to it. And I used to take my uh, my mom and dad's credit card without them knowing. I was just like, cash in, get all the crowns, so I could, you know, advance in the game. And I got in trouble a lot, but I just kept doing it. It came to this point where I really wanted to, you know, I just really wanted to play the game because I got sanctioned. They cut up, cut me off from that, and I went to take this guy's um, computer. Uh, I brought it home. I was playing. I felt bad doing it. I was like, "This is not right," but I was like, "But hey, I want to play my game." <laughs> and then I got caught. He brought it back. Uh, I felt really bad. My dad, of course, they were disappointed, but. You know, all that happened, and I was doing a lot of things at school, just not paying attention to the teacher, talking to class, you know, like what ordinary teenagers do, because they want to get acceptance, they want to get acceptance, they want to be looked at as someone who's cool with everyone else, they want to fit in, and that's what I was just following the trends, just trying to be someone who um, people can look up to, you know, so I just kept going in that route. And I, I, I wasn't fulfilled, I wasn't feeling any, I wasn't satisfied with myself. So sooner or later I got intact with the grace of God. Uh, this guy called Joseph Prince and oh, no. I kept watching. The, the first time I read, uh, I, I was like watching him, I've never heard the things he said. I was wondering, is this really true? Because I've never heard it in my whole entire life. And I kept watching, just kept watching, I was like, this sounds really good. Maybe it's too good to be true. I just I got the Bible, and he, he really he encourages his um his viewers to read the Bible for themselves. So I was like, okay. I got the Bible. I went to Romans. I just read through it. I was like, wow. Literally everything he said was there, scripted. And then I went to the Greek. Even I bought um a Greek a Greek app. I looked through the words, and I was like, wow. Okay, this is really true. But then still, I just felt like it was just too good to be true because. 
He was saying things that it doesn't matter how much mistakes you've made in the past, you can still receive forgiveness. And for that, I've never really come in contact with perfect forgiveness. And to really, to really comprehend that you, you can be loved for who you are, especially for those who know how bad they are, to really comprehend that someone who know everything about you and still love you just blows your mind. Yeah, and good. it took me a while, but I really wanted to believe it. I just kept listening, kept listening, kept listening. And slowly I started to believe it. And effortless, I didn't see it in myself, but like my heart began to change. And then I started to identify myself by the one he loves. Mm -hmm. I started to get my identity in that. Mm -hmm. And all my addictions, all the things that, like trying to get favor with other people, trying to be accepted by my friends, all that just broke off effortlessly. I didn't. I wasn't trying to do it. It's just it just broke off. Cause when you when you know how much he loves you, it's hard for me to explain. You have to really get this revelation. When you know how much he loves you, you don't really have to fall down to anyone else. You don't have to be something that you're not. You know when you're when, when I'm in class and I see everyone like talking to back to the teacher because they wanna they want everyone to look at them as they're cool. For I don't need I, I don't need to do that. I could be quiet. I'll sit there. I'll still be happy because I know who loves me. Right. All right, you might not get my, you might not, I might not get your approval because mm -hmm. I do this or I wear this, like, oh, I'm a Christian. I might not get your approval, but I know who loves me, so I don't need your acceptance. You know, so Amen. when you know that, that really just, it installs like, how do I say this? It installs a firm foundation in you that it's like, it's like a rock in you mm -hmm. that you, you're not moved by anything else. But that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Might be, there might be storms mm -hmm. coming your way, and every now and then you might be like, oh, they're doing this, it seems fun, and you want to do it, but when you have that in installation in you that someone, that God loves you no matter what, you're not going to kowtow to those little things. You know, when you know that you call for greater things, you don't go down for little things. Right. You know? yeah. So, yeah, just the grace of God just came to my life, and wow, it was just... It made everything so much co so colorful. I started to see things in the likeness of his cross. I started to really, really um, experience what people experience. Like when I used to, when I was little, I used to look at people, and I was like, "Why are they so happy? What are they happy about?" Because in my perspective, I thought life was just get a, get a job, go to college, you know, get a job and retire, and then you're dead. That was, that was my perspective. And, uh, I, of course, <laughs> that's a very bad thing. And then, yeah, at a certain point of time, I was just thinking, is it really worth it to go through all that hard work and, and then die? die? So for me, that's why I started losing interest in my study because I was just thinking, why should I do this if at the end of the day I'm not going to be rewarded for what I'm doing? Yes, you get a job. You get a good job. But does that job really fulfill you? On, you get money, but what are you going to do with the money? Oh, I'm going to buy a house. Is that money, does that house going to really fulfill you? At the end of the day, it won't. And I know a lot of people who are like, you know, celebrities and all of them, they have fame. They have all the money that you could, you could even wish for. And yet some of them commit suicide. So obviously, if money and fame is what we're looking for, it's not really what's going to fulfill us. And we, we read that in Ecclesiastics. In Solomon, the, the richest man in the world, actually, and still is, except Jesus says that I'm a, a great and Solomon has come, right. but because he's the one who gave him the riches, first of all. Right. So, he, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he had everything. He had um, maids. I'm, I'm pretty sure back in that day, they could have, like, a lot of wives. 700. Yeah, 700. That's a lot. And we think that <laughs> you're going to be happy the more you have. But really, God's saying that all you, all you need to do is just have a relationship with me, commune with me. And really, those who are in here, you don't understand, the people of the world should really favor you. Because you have something that they don't have. They look like they, oh, they, they're having so much fun, they're, they're laughing, they're doing wild parties. You think that they're happy, but they're not. They don't show you that at the end of the day that they're, they're vomiting in the, because they're vomiting all, all the things that they drank in that night. They're in the, you know, they're sick and all that thing. Yep. So you don't see the, you don't see their heart. Everything they do is really empty. You don't really see their cry for God, and they're really crying out for God, they're trying to soothe their conscience because they've done so many bad things, and they think, oh, because they haven't heard the truth, no, one, no one's told them the truth, and they're just trying to live a heavenistic lifestyle because, oh, this is it, you know, and they think this is just it, you just die and you're inexistent, which is not true, we all know that we have a soul, spirit, and body.
And, you know, the, they really need to hear the truth. And, um, again, I sidetracked it to the topic. We are the ones who really have the truth. We're the ones who really... We're the ones who are really fulfilled. If you really want to know who who should be favored, is the one who really goes into God's Word. And it's weird because we look for everything in the world for fulfillment, but the only thing we don't look for is where the fulfillment actually is, is in God's Word. And when, the, when we really don't want it, like for me... Can you say that again, please? We look for fulfillment in everything, but we don't look for fulfillment in the place where fulfillment actually is. It's in God's Word. Yeah. And it's weird because... It just blows my at, at times, I don't really feel like reading His Word, but then when I actually read it, I get to, I, I see so many things, I'm like, wow, okay, this is, you get a new perspective, and then you start seeing things more brighter, and actually, God's Word, it really brings everything in you alive. It says, in my Word is life. Mm -hmm. uh, where is the scripture? My words are flesh, no, my words are... I can't really quote it to you, but it says in his li in his word is life. Mm -hmm. It's life to yeah. His words are life to your flesh, mm -hmm. and health to those who find them. I'm pretty sure. Right. Right. So really, in his word is where life is. If you're lacking life, if you're lacking anything, if you're in addiction, if you're uh, finan 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 uh, financial lack, uh, if you're lacking anything really in your life, you have to be in God's word. You have to get in it. And when you get in it, it's not gonna. It's really gonna. You don't really know. Like reading through the stories, like uh, Ruth, you read Psalm. They might not be particularly talking about your situation, but in the light, in His light, we see light, right? When you look at it, 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 it reflects light at you. And then when you leave, you you notice that the problem that you were so scared of is either solved or God gives you wisdom to solve that that problem. Right. So really, you really want to get into His Word. And actually, when you get into His Word, the people who the the, the most joyful Christians. It's not only that they got impacted by the grace of God, it's those who really enjoy communion with God. Because they're, they're Christians who, God is always with us, you never leave us or, or, or forsake us, but they don't really, how do I say, there's a certain nearness to God. Mm -hmm. So we're all close to God, but there are people who can be closer. Right. It's not that, God always God wants to be close to everyone, but He's not going to force Himself in, into our lives. He's in your life, but some people don't notice it, and... You only get to get as close to him as you want to. Yep. If that makes any sense. If you yeah. want to get closer, he wants to be closer to you. So you just seek him. It's not like when I say seek, I'm really I'm careful because in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. So they had to lament and pray, God, please come to me. You know, they had to keep praying consistently. For us, God's always with us. We just have to realize the reality of his existence in our lives and really take that to acknowledge it, get into his word. Ask God, actually, before you read the Word, don't just come in there blindly and then you notice that you don't get anything out of it. Before you read the Word, just ask God, please open my eyes. Please speak to me. And the primary thing you want to do when you get into God's Word is see Jesus. Because Jesus is actually, the whole um, Old Testament is all focused on Jesus. Yes. Everything that's written, here, even in Genesis, when it says, um, when God says, when He said to the devil, from no, He said to Eve that from your seed, the, you, you remember from your seed, the the person from your seed who crushed Satan's head, that seed was talking about Jesus. Yeah. So every single thing in the Old Testament, it, it, it seems like it's vague, but really you need the Holy Spirit to open it up, open it up to you. And He wants to open it up to you, but again, He's not going to force anything on you. So you, you have to let Him really open your eyes. And for me, it's really the best thing. I don't know, I really, I feel sad for everyone who just depends on themselves and say, oh, I'm so, like, everyone who, those people you see in the world that they say, I'm the captain of my destiny, and all that, you, you just look at the fruit of their life, that you can see that they're not really, <laughs> you feel bad for them even when you look at them, because they're, you can't, God didn't create us to hold everything on ourselves, mm -hmm. um, like, people think, oh, a real man is someone who, um, is someone who, who, how do I say this? A real man is someone who um, who takes care of the things by himself, who takes everything on himself. There's a challenge. He goes for it. He he's basically his own god. That that's what we think a real man is. But no, we, if we look at David, David who knocked out uh, knocked out Goliath, obviously that was not the 
perception that we're thinking of who a real man is. What David did when he knocked out Goliath, when he asked, when we went to, when I read the scripture, it says that he said the battle, the battle is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And also, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So obviously, a real man who really knocks down those giants is not someone who defends for themselves. It's someone who is being shepherded by God, right. by the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you see yourself as a sheep and him as your, as your shepherd, you will not lack. And obviously, it's not you defending yourself. It's not you providing for yourself. It's you leaning on him. Like, what, what does the sheep do? The sheep stays by the shepherd. Mm -hmm. he, the sheep doesn't worry about what am I going to eat because the shepherd is going to be the one who provides him the food. He doesn't worry about if a wolf is coming to his way because the shepherd is the one with the staff who protects him. The sheep doesn't protect himself, nor can, nor can he protect himself. So we have to lean to his love, just lean, lean on him in everything we do. Just know you're not the one providing. He's the one providing for you. Amen. All right. Amen. So I kind of got uh, um, sidetracked to what I was talking about. Great, Sean. Yeah. Good. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Again, I was go go back to the context of grace. We think that grace is something that we think grace is like little. Like okay, when you when you come born again, God gives you grace or something, and then you have to move on to the law. And uh, when I say the law, people don't really understand what the law is. The law is basically, the essence of the law is you, is on you. Because back then, the uh, Old Testament, the law is basically, you have to commit, you have to uh, obey the commandments. And you have to, you know, you must love God, blah, 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 blah. And the law is good and holy, but it cannot make us good and holy. Because we have in us the sin principle, which was given by Adam. So everyone born to this world is susceptible, is, I don't think that that's a word. We're... We're given, we're given in to sin, basically. It yeah. means that, that's why God doesn't want us to trust ourselves because of the sin principle in us. And a lot of people don't see that and they think they're, oh, I'm a good person. I don't, I'm not as bad as this guy. But really, the things that are in him are in you too. Mm -hmm. So if you were put in his position and, and hit, in, the, in the crisis that he was in, mm -hmm. you'll probably fall like he did. So that's why, the, we, you know, don't judge anyone else, you know, because... What, what's in him is in you too. Mm -hmm. yep. But of course, the difference from us in the world is that we're not, we're not identified by the flesh. Yeah. We're in Christ now. We died to the flesh. We died to the law. When you die to the law, where it says, um, where there's no law, where there's no law, because the strength of sin is the law, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Where there's no law, they can't be... And I'm not saying you, you won't sin, but sin doesn't have power on you. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're under yep. the law... Sin has power. Oh. You know, there, there's the, the two covenants are antithesis. It basically means what is for this one is the opposite of the other one. Mm -hmm. So if sin has power in the law, righteousness has power under grace. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're under grace, that's when it says sin will not have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you're under grace, you fulfill the requirements of the law. You don't try to fulfill them. They're fulfilled in you by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And again, by talking about the law, the law was basically given to men to show his sinfulness. A lot of people, they use the law to demonstrate how good they are. But again, if you really, if you, if, if they might not say it, but in their hearts, they know that they haven't kept something. Because when you boast about the law that, oh, I've kept the law, blah, 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 I've done this and that. The law always bring out one thing that you haven't kept. Yeah. So yeah. you can't really boast in it. It was, it was given to, basically by the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. It was given to make everyone guilty. And to stop everyone from boasting. Yeah. Now, God basically, God is the, he's the best, uh, he's the best advertisement person, salesperson, because he gave the law first. Because mm -hmm. if he gave grace first, yeah. no one would see the. Because by the way, everyone was sitting or again before the law, so they they didn't know it was sin first because the law wasn't given. They didn't know what was bad and what was good. Right. They were doing bad without knowing it was bad. Right. So God gave the law to show them. That, cause by the way, they knew they didn't know it was bad, so they didn't really know why God should judge me. Right. You know, God should judge me. Why I haven't done anything bad? So God bring the law to so bring us to the knowledge of sin, to know the, how sinful we are inside of us, so that we could come to the end of ourselves. Basically, yeah. we could come to a place where we really know we can't do anything in and of ourselves. There's nothing good dwelling in me, and that's when God says, "Okay, I'll be your all in all." That's when grace comes, and that's when grace, when grace comes, basically grace is, you see like a cup, the, there's sentiments in it, right? Mm -hmm. When the water, when the, you know, it's filled with water, the sentiments are below it, but it looks clear. But would you drink it? No, because there's still 
there's poison. That's it. And it's called the sediment's poison. There's poison. Is just because there's a little bit of poison doesn't mean it's clean. It yeah. may, it looks clear because you haven't shaked it. So basically, the law is it shakes your sediments. So basically, uh, for uh, let's say a teenager, let's say me, <laughs> let's say me. Uh, <laughs> if you a lot of a lot of kids, when you tell them do this, uh, it depends how strictly you do it. When you tell them do this and like you you you, you say it very strictly. You can see how the person the person reacts to that. They it's like no, you don't tell me what to do. Right. You know yeah. you, you, uh, that. Once you say that, it's like you're shit. You're stirring. You're stirring their flesh up. Yeah. That's what the law does. Grace brings the sediments all the way down. It's like when when someone's very um proud, mostly the people who are proud are very insecure. So if you're proud or um let's say someone's very uh they're they had a rough childhood, so they they really have bad temper. Um, those kind of people, when they really impact the, uh, the grace of God, their anger just goes all the way down. It's because grace just melts our heart. It really, it melts everything. It's not like there's not sin in us, but it manifests the things that we cannot manifest for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It basically, when people see you doing good things, you know it's not you. They think it's you, but of course you know it's not you because the sediments are there, they're down. But then when the sediments are down, you're living by the Spirit. It brings me to this one scripture. It says that walk by the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. So yeah. if you walk by the Spirit, you're walking, but He's the one. I, this is, well, let me, it brings me back to another topic. Um, I'm sorry, I keep going off track. Uh, you're on track. You're on track. Uh, so where's this thing? So it, it says that um, walk, uh, walking in the Spirit is... Walking the spirit, um, I think it says walking the spirit is spirit directed activity or something, yeah. something like that. So God, God doesn't lead a parked truck. You have to move. When you move, that's when He directs your steps. You should go here. You should go there. Mm -hmm. So you can't stand still and just say, God, you, you have to move, go somewhere, yeah. and then God will lead your steps. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what it means. When you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, because He will be leading your past. He'll be, he'll be the one manifesting the uh, perfection of the law in you. Mm -hmm. So that's when, you know, you can't take any boast in it because it's not you, it's Him. You know, and, but when you, start, when you start walking by the flesh, you become very legalistic. That's when the Holy Spirit backs off. He's like, okay, you want to take care of it? Hands off. And you start doing and then that's when your flesh, your sentiments come up. And then you start seeing just how bad you are. And that's when yeah. Jesus comes again. It's like a yep. constant thing. It happens a lot in our lives to the point we just finally come to the end of ourselves. Our end, the end of ourselves. That's really where God wants to meet us. He really wants to come. He wants to. He doesn't want you to go through all the pain, but if he has to, he sometimes he has to let you, because so there's some people who they really believe that there's good in them, and that's yeah. why we get disappointed in ourselves. We believe there's good in us. And then when bad when we do something bad, we wonder why why did I do that? I thought I was a good person, and then you, you start getting dep depressed. When the Bible says that in us dwells no good thing, yeah. and you have to believe God's word, and He's trying to save us from all that heart heartache and pain. But at times He has to let you see, like for a Peter, the uh, I'm pretty sure Jesus said that Satan has. Um, let me see if I can go to the scripture. He's basically saying he prayed for, he said, Satan has called for you or something. Mm -hmm. um, but I prayed for you that when you fall, um, that you don't lose faith or something. Right. So bas yeah. basically yeah. it was saying that, see, as you can see, the Lord will let us fail, but he doesn't want us to lose faith. Because the right. reason for yeah. that is that you will fall, but just make sure that you know that he is your righteousness, he is your holiness. You have to know he he is you today. You, the, the thing you did is not who you are. You died in Christ, and you are raised up by, with Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, as the, the verse says in, um, I think, Corinthians or whatever it's called, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. That means you should, you should look off yourself, because really, the, the reason we're so painful at times, we feel so much pain, is because we're very inward looking. Yeah. And when you're inward looking, you start thinking, oh, it's about me, blah, blah, blah. And actually, it could bring you to this place where you either think you're better than everyone else or you think everyone else is better than you. Mm -hmm. But God wants to be in the middle and humility. Humility is not, is not being like, 
oh, like this, this, this is what fake humility is. When someone gives you a compliment, it's like, oh, it's not me. Uh, you know, that's that's fake, that's false humility. You, when someone gives you a compliment and says, thank you, but God gets the glory. Thank you. It's God working in me. So I, I receive it, yes, but it's not me. Right. I'm not saying, oh, it's not. And actually, when you're doing that, you're not giving the glory to anyone else. Right. Yeah. You're just, you just putting yourself in the dirt. Yep. You know, that's not what God wants to be, what, what wants us to be like. And um, okay, let me. I'm gonna go a little bit side uh, um, sidetracked, but let me go back to the story of Peter. Again, like what I was saying, that people think grace is like some little thing. Look at Peter's life when Jesus first met him. When um, when he says, "Let me use your boat." There's this one point of time where he he noticed he just he got a like a he got a revelation of who Jesus was and he kneeled down by before Jesus says Lord depart from me and but it's kind of a it's it's weird because he's saying depart from me but yet he's holding his legs he's saying I do not deserve to be in your presence but yet I cannot live without you yeah so he's he was holding it unto him he he's like depart from me for I'm a sinful man he and you notice when you notice the holiness of God. And, you know, when you know the holiness of homelessness of God, you really realize how sinful you are. Right, yeah. So that's why he was so, I bet he was very self-conscious because he <laughs> realized how sinful he was. The Lord depart from me. Of course, the Lord did not depart from him. A few, a few years later, when Peter denied knowing Jesus three times and cursing and swearing, the Bible says, incredible. Um, when he denied knowing Jesus, what brought him back was not the knowledge of who, the, the holiness of God. Well, actually, what brought him back was the love of God. Yeah, right. There's actually yeah. a verse, the, the Bible doesn't really, it's very secretive about it because it says that when Jesus returned, I think when he went to, when he returned to the disciples, he said, and Cephas, which is Peter's name. So that means he must have had a, uh, he must have had a, he, a communion with Peter before that, but the Holy Spirit doesn't tell us anything. He like veils it from our eyes. So, he he must have taught, he must have reconciled Peter back to himself, but of course it was by his love, and his love is what brought him back. And you, you can see he, um, you can see when Jesus when he finally brought him to the end of himself, he asked him, Peter, do you love me? Before before he would be like, of course I love you. I'll go to the I'll go to death for you. But now you saw his response how he he got humbled. He says, Lord, I feel you. That's basically it's I love you, but eh, not really. Yeah. You know, so he, he he got he got brought down back to his level, and he knew where he was. And he, the Lord asked him again, "Peter, do you love me?" And he said the same thing. And that's when he says, "Feed my sheep." And you can see how the Lord really reconciled him back, even though he failed like horribly, worse than everyone else. The Lord reinstalled him back to the ministry, which was really you can you see God's grace magnified in his life. And that was the same person who preached, and three thousand people got saved. So it really, again, goes to the fact that it doesn't matter what you did in your past, God can change your future if you believe the right thing. And, you know, grace really magnifies all our, all our lives are, everyone here is not, you're not here for not a, for, you're here for a time like this. God could have put you to 2,000 years ago, but he didn't. He put you here at this time because there's a, there's a work that needs to be done in your life and through you by God to impact the people around you. Yeah. And by the way, every one of us are very unique. I, I like chemistry. It says all our fingerprints are different. There's no one that's the same. And God went to this such great lengths to really make you so unique. Your fingerprints, your genes even, in, in, in you and out of you shows just how unique you are. God has went to such great extents to make you not be the same as anyone else. Every one of you are different, and actually, you're the only one who can fulfill the one the calling that God has put in your life, yeah. and that's such an honor because God gives us such a privilege to be so unique, and I'm the only one who can fulfill what is in my life. Yeah. So God has a calling for each one of us, and He wants to fulfill it in our lives. And you know, if you let Him, if you really let God in your life, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm for a believer. I know you guys are believers. If you let Him orchestrate your life and literally lead your steps, He will fulfill the destiny that He has in your life. Mm -hmm. And that destiny, you guys, will, you, we, we like to think small. Like we go for, mm -hmm. I want to have a million dollars, blah, 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 and I want to have this and this. In heaven, we walk on streets of gold. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to be looking for small ambitions. Mm -hmm. God wants us to think bigger. 
You know, think out of the picture. Think, strive for bigger things than fulfilling your own self. You know, we're called for greater things. We're actually called kings and priests. Mm -hmm. And really, you have to really possess it. Because even though we are, they're, they're, you can tell when a Christian really has this revelation. When they step into a room, people sense there's something about this person. Mm -hmm. That's someone who really knows who they are. Right. You have to possess that identity. When you, It's not like you're possessing something you don't have. You have it. Now possess it. I am this. Yeah. And that's when you walk out. And that's when people can really sense there's something regal about this person. And that's when your life starts to impact the people around you. Mm -hmm. So you really have to possess that. And I'm getting to the end of the thing, I think. All right? Yeah. So, uh, what I really want you guys to do is possess your identity in Christ. Really know that it's not about you. It's about Him. And actually, when you find Him, you find yourself because you're in Him. So you really want to... I really recommend that you guys, you know, read the Bible. It's, the Bible has everything. If you want to look for love, it's in here. Violence is in here. Every single thing is in the Bible. I'm not sure why people don't read the Word. But, I'm much shocked that. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I highly recommend you actually start with um, the books of Paul because he was written to the, he was, he was assigned to the Gentiles, which most of us are Gentiles. So when you go, like, if you first open the Bible and you go to, like, let's say Peter's, most of the things he's writing, because he was assigned to the Jews. Mm -hmm. So when you read some of the things he read, it's not, okay, all Scripture is profitable for us, but right. not all Scripture is written to us. Right. So Good. when we pull things out of context, that's when we have all these wrong beliefs. Oh, someone could um, lose their salvation when mm -hmm. the Hebrews was actually writing to a Jew who was trying to go back to Judaism. Right. Not a Christian. We, we're not in Judaism. What's Judaism? We're not, we're not there. You know, so when you read things out of context, I'm not saying don't read the, their, um, you know, Peter's, Peter's um, and all the rest, their epistles, but I'm just saying, just, first of all, if you're, since we're all, like, we're all learning, I'm learning, you want to stick to Paul's for just a, just a little bit. Just read it, be digested to it, really accept it, because that's who you are, really. Right. That's who God has made you to be. Once you accept that and you really know what Jesus did on the cross for us, that He forgave all our sins, and people can't really understand this. He actually, since Jesus is God, right, He could go in the past and the future, mm -hmm. and He forgave every one of your sins. I know you, you can't really receive that revelation. You think, okay, if I know God received, um, forgave all my sins, oh, I'm just going to go. You think people are just going to go sin, but really, Jesus said that to whom He who... who loves much to who him who loves much is forgiven much i yeah. think that's what it means mm -hmm. so those who know they're forgiven much are those who love much those who really are on fire for god are those who know how much god has forgiven them yeah. right and how bad they were if you don't love god that much and of course we're not anchoring our love for him it's his love for us i'm saying those who really are on fire for him if you notice someone is not really on fire it's because they really think that only God, God has forgiven me just a little bit. Um, I wasn't all that bad, you know, but when you really know how bad you were and that God has cleared all of that for you and that your future is glory and that God has so much good for you and you don't deserve anything that God's going to be putting in your life and there's even so much more in store for you. Even in eternity, there's even so much more. We're going to be ruling the universes and everything. When you notice all of that, then you're like, wow. And that, that's when you start, your heart starts, something happens to your heart. And you, that's when those people, they're really on fire for God, you know. They want to do things for God. Who cares about me? It's all about God, you know. That transformation happens when you get the full revelation of who God is in your life. Now I'm going to go to the uh, altar call. Um, all right, let's close our eyes. All right, if there's anyone here that hasn't received salvation yet, God loves you. And he wants you to receive salvation. And you have to know God went to great extents to love us. Mm -hmm. And He doesn't want anyone to leave in this, from this world without receiving His Son. He says, I do not, He doesn't want anyone to perish, but have everlasting life. And whoever believes in the Son shall not come into judgment, but has, has passed from death into life. If you're here today and you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please save this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that your son died on the cross for me and paid for all my sins, past, present, and future. Lord, I know that you love me and that you're coming back for me. I know I'm washed by your blood, your precious blood, and that I'm made righteous through your obedience. 
In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And that's it. The Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, that you've chosen this vessel to minister your word to your people this morning. Dear God, we cover him with the blood of Jesus Christ because we know out of the words that you have spoken through him this morning, the enemy is going to come after him. But the blood of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. will speak the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ yes. over him, mm -hmm. over every area of his life, academics, athletics, spiritual life, emotional life, whatever it is, we cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ and that he will move from grace to grace. And that the virtue that has come out of him will grow and multiply. And, and you said that you give to those who have, you give them even more. That you increase the revelation and insight in this man. And that he will speak unto the nations. Amen. He will speak as an oracle of God yes. unto the nations. Amen. I declare it by the power of the Spirit of God this morning. And your word and your kingdom will be established firmly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 To greater things, you don't settle for lesser, for lesser things. I heard that in the message that was preached this morning. Another thing that struck me was we all look for fulfillment, but frequently in all the wrong places. Yep. I got that. Thirdly, we are all near to God. We believers are all near to God, but there are some who are closer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also heard. By the way, I didn't listen to you see that he's not scripted, so there's no way I could have got all of this. I got it right here while he was delivering this message. Uh, yes, something also that came out, I mean, we could tweak the whole message for the next few months, okay? Because there were several headlines that were coming out there. Another one is, what you need to look for in the Bible is Jesus. Read the yeah. Bible intentionally to see Jesus. Yeah. What else come out? Sin has dominion over the law, over people who are under the law, but righteousness has power and dominion over those who are under grace. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? Uh, and I also heard that proud people are frequently people who are insecure. Oh boy. Oh boy. Don't step on my feet there. Don't you step on my feet. Yes, another one now. God frequently doesn't God frequently doesn't lead you when you are standing still, mm -hmm. but more when you are going somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you are being led, okay, you must be walking to be led by God. Hallelujah. That's a, that's a, that's a rema word for somebody this morning. Don't you sit there and wait for God to lead you. Get out and go out for that job. Get out and put on that application. Get out and do something. Amen. God is going to lead you when you strike your hands at something. What about this? The Lord may sometimes allow you to fail, but he will not let you to fail to the extent of losing your faith. Yeah. We know that the devil can also cause you to fail. And when he causes you to fail, he wants you to fail and lose your faith. Mm. But God will not let you to fail to the extent of losing your faith. That's comforting, right? Finally, I'm, I'm preaching another message, but several headlines. I'm just giving you the headlines. If you want to tweet it and yeah. uh, put it on Instagram. False humility is not accepting credit. Yeah. How about that? So there was so much, and I don't want to go to your own notes, but if you want to, one day, maybe in the coming weeks, to share your notes with the rest of us, I'm looking forward to see what there was a lot that the God, the Lord packed out here. But I could just take only a little at a time. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. We're going to let you go. you watching us online. We're going to let it go and we trust you. Love it. And uh, if you feel inspired to be part of this ministry, even from Illinois or wherever you're watching, there are ways you could connect with us. Watch our website that will be placed, pasted onto you, and you can see how you can be part of this global family that is now digital. God loves you, and will bless you, and see you again next week.